Hang on a second. You know, the thing is, we just, I mean, just don't we just kind of let God be God? He knows how to be God. And we let Him be God, I'm telling you what. He gets you past you because He's being God. When you take over again, what happens? I want to shake your hand. And when you let him, when you let him be God, it's the, the strangest times he speaks to you, and he has something he wants to tell you, or how he wants to guide you. How many I'm talking about? Or he wants to pat you on the back, or he might want to say, you know what? It's time for me to pat you on the rear end. Just straight out. Somebody obey the Lord. Uh, I don't know if I can remember this. There's a song that the saints have sung from old. It's It goes like this. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, lead me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There's many people here, about everybody, that just takes this gift of God for granted in them. They don't think about that. But do you know that when the Spirit came to live in you, um, He's continuously saying fill my cup fill this cup up fill it up so if you continuously whether you encourage each other or say a word of, of exhortation inside or out wherever it is it the spirit is continuously coming to the father god and say fill me up this is what's filling you up you don't understand that is he who is filling himself up in you. Just as he said, I continuously pray for you day and night. I continuously fill your cup up. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord God, God will save you. Go ahead, give him a bit of praise. Out there. The Lord I God will say to the ones he made, that show you us, me. I want to show you the plan I have for you. Just trust me. Don't lean to your own understanding. Just let me have my way. And I'll show you. I'll come into your life. And fill you to so overflowing. That you're, gonna, you're not going to want anything else. So all the Lord God, God would be saying to every one of us. Let me have my way. Then I want to show the world what I can do with people. It'll submit to me. And others are going to be amazed. Give the Lord a good praise offering. Right, turn around for somebody to see her. Trying, he don't try, but just for human understanding, <laughs> because of who we are, God is continually. <laughs> I'm going to use the word trying to get through to us, and I'm telling you, He's got the simplest plan. It's so simple you can't even think or imagine how simple it is. And here we are, just that's just too simple. And it's just a matter of just submitting. That's all. Man, I'll tell you what. He's going to build his church. Is that what he says? Mm -hmm. And for some reason or another, 
so many, many, many years ago. Was preaching, Louis and I were preaching at Salvation Army. It was on 9th Avenue in Jefferson. They, they moved it. And man was down there every week. I'd be playing a piano and she'd be leading songs and we'd be preaching. It was a, yeah, they used to have a lot of fun. All of a sudden they decided to move. And in fact, my hero, and he prayed for me last night. I said, Pastor Barnett, you're going to have the mayor, I mean the major, the Salvation Army on TV. The Salvation Army, see if you can convince him not to, to move the Salvation Army. Because man, we're having revival now, so to say. You know? So he tried, but of course he couldn't. And then after they decided to move, I said, Pastor, you know, we've got a report with all those guys down there. Now right across the street, we used to call it Wino Park. That's t t today, it's a museum there, you know, everything else. Library Park, on and on and on. And, on. and I said, you know, I think I, maybe we could go and have services on Sunday there because they're shutting it down. We got quite a report. I said, what do you think if I asked the choir director if it would be okay to use some of the people in the choir to come down as we start our little outreach there? He looked at me and he said, yeah, church on the street. You know, I'll tell you something. That was God. Yeah. And I was just thinking this last few days, where's church on the street? On the street. Yeah. Right. I mean, we have it in here, and that's fine. That's good. But how many think God likes us to go back out in the street Amen. where we came from? Amen. 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 So, man, we've been down to St. Vincent of Paul, ambushing. Uh, and then last night we went to fair. Yeah. yeah. And man, I'll tell you what, there's other flake on the guys that went to a different outreach. No, it was me. They went out to 9th Avenue, 19th Avenue, and Camelback, and everything else. And so we ended up all meeting down there at the fair. And you know, we was carrying crosses and Dick Lady, you here? Where are you? Come up here real quick. Oh, he's outside? Yeah. Anyway, we had guys preaching on the street, and he was one of them and Across the street in the fair, we have people carrying crosses and have people singing right as they're coming out the gate. Well, probably about, oh, I don't know, 10 30, right around in there. There's a bunch of them that came from the outreach. And the next thing you know, and I don't know, I don't know if they're going to let us come back or not, they set up, we set up a little PA system there. And if the people that came from the outreach are all jacked up because they had one, two people to the Lord. And we're down there just on the street, right in the middle of the street, establishing the kingdom of God right there, right in the middle of it. And they started singing. And man, there are signs all over the place. We have, I think we got about 17 signs or something like that. And man, I don't usually do this, but because I just want to get everybody else going. And I'm over there, somebody was preaching, you know, and I was just over there. And I saw people walking across the street. And I said, let me see that thing a minute. Man, I'm starting preaching. Uh -oh. like, you know, geez, why don't you guys walking across the street? You know what you got to watch And they're, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm just thinking. Then they're over just singing and, man, blasting everything. And it was just neat. We established the kingdom of God out there. Nicoletti, where are you? Did you come back in here? Did you flake out and go outside? <laughs> I tell you what, he ain't no flake. Yeah. Man, he got, he got the preaching last night. And he took a crowbar to get the... Microphone from so I give it to somebody. <laughs> Real quick, how was that last night? Yeah, it was so awesome. I mean, we were out there, we were taking the land, like Pastor Walt said, and then uh, Jacob showed up with his crew, and um, Miss Terry and Ralph showed up, and um, Pastor Remington started with the little tiny PA. Uh, with music, and we were all out there singing together, and signs are going around, handing out tracks, and preaching across the street. It was just so awesome. I'm glad to be a part of it. And you picked up a cross to start carrying it? Yeah, I have to pick up my cross every day. <laughs> He's greedy. He wanted to do it all. He said he could do it all by himself. <laughs> but what do you think about it? You think we ought to just let God do it, not Nick Letty? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a good praise on it. You, you gotta catch this. You got a little video. You guys ready with the video? 
It's amazing, unbelievable what God's doing everywhere. You want to turn on the video? Let's then you want to explain it. there and just serving faithfully. We had a beautiful health care out there and just so many things are happening. We had a, what, a week and a half ago, these guys were out in the outreach. Maybe I'll let Victor tell you later. And in the forest as well, you know, all the homeless are basically living out in the forest. So they go out in the forest and found a guy that wasn't responsive and was able to get... I'm sorry, it's church on the street, not church in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> church on the streets, even in the forest. Praise God. Beautiful that victory even that I heard stayed with the guy all day long. Paramedics came and he's alive today. He finally got taken off his breathing machine. He's eating on his own. And it's just amazing to see that God is really moving mightily through pacing and what the guys are doing. One of the guys I see is in a newspaper, decorated a whole building and everything like that. It's just amazing to see what's going on. So just continue to see, you know. Pray for Payson and go out there and see what God is doing. You see, tomorrow, my wife and I, we're going to be meeting with a politician, a House representative, that is looking to pass the HB 1070 law that will institute our program and mandate it more in prison. So everyone coming out of prison will have to go into a program. And leading in that wow. would be church on the street. So just pray for a meeting tomorrow, and let's, let God be God. Wait a minute. You know, last week, they had something in Gallup. Would you tell us about that? Well, it just needs to have Dr. Beverly and her team that's been with the Dream Center for over seven years. And just to see her heart and love for the people, she's like, yeah, I want to go outreach. And I, every day I come look for you, you're gone. Where are you going? I was like, well, I'm going to Gallup. She's like, well, I'm going too. Can I bring doctors and psychologists and everybody? And it was just so neat. She set up and we had just a very impact. When did, People can really see, especially in a town like Gallup, they're very sensitive, very sensitive, and they really want to see that they want to know that we care yeah. before they care what we know. Yeah. And just seeing that we were providing free medical services, psychological services, you know, everybody needs a little twisted and, you know, redoing. And it was just neat to see that God was working through all that. And I'm telling you, on Sunday morning service, we had many come to the Lord. And I've never seen the church packed up. We had people standing up past the wall on Saturday, on Sunday morning. I, it was just literally, we're about to bust in, hopefully, the next month into our new building. Because we're already over max capacity. The people came in, we would have got shut down, probably. No. Well, I don't know about that but do we got anybody outside of this place here today anybody across the way please praise jesus well we're wait jesus a minute hang, hang on there a minute pastor daniel <laughs> we're overflowing too <laughs> no. in fact we had to spread out to 
That's right. On the other side. Amen. Amen. So you're going to have to do something up there by getting a bigger building or Absolutely. something. Absolutely. You know, the thing is, just letting God be God and see what's going to happen. Amen. Through it all. By the way, we got a lot of opposition coming against us. But we got more more for us than there is against us. How many believe that? Yeah. And that's why I'm going to tell you what. That's why we just got to let God be God. He's chosen. He's chosen us or ordained us to go forth and bring forth fruit. And the, the more opposition you have against you, that, that means the more we're affecting the, the kingdom of darkness. And if we're affecting the kingdom of darkness, we got the power of God, the kingdom of God behind us. Amen? Amen. So all of us, each and every one of us that are called here, working together, just let God be. Let's see what, that's amazing, just to see what God can do. To me, I like concept the church on the street let's go out in the street but there's other things that God's doing he's building he's building people how many believe that amen. how many believe he's using us each and every one of us amen. amen man we got some good ones here how many believe that amen. in fact we got a good preacher here today that's been doing a lot of good stuff here for years and years and years and amen. he and his wife go to the jails they go to the prisons amen and never back down so let's just see how God's going to make it all fit. Is everybody ready to do that? Yeah. Even the people across the way, if there's anybody over there? Is there anybody over there? I think they heard that in Payson. They heard it in the forest. <laughs> Watch out for the leaves that are falling, man. You sure there's open doors? You sure there's anybody over there? Make sure you guys turn on your mic so we can hear you. <laughs> let's see if there's anybody over there. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. I don't hear anybody. Oh, right, you want to show them? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we can beat those four people. One, two, three. Jesus! Uh, I don't know about that. They heard us. What don't court. you know about it? They heard us in Gallup and Payson. <laughs> Man, we got them coming out of the forest. Yeah. Don't hear nothing. One. <laughs> okay, that's fine. My grandmother could do better than that. Oh. Hey, God bless you guys over here. Listen. You know, let's, let's let, let the whole thing come together. That guy, you got jumping. Bill's got a suit on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, I do because I'm going to start wearing it every time I'm here on Sunday morning. Amen. Is, is that you? Uh, it's really me. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where's that? Wow, oh, man, it's on Sunday nights, right after church. I go out and do all the homeless right on uh, Indian school. It's so cool. I, I, I guess I should probably get a team of people. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's so incredible. We take bowl, soup bowls and pass them out and whatever else we have. You got anything in them? <laughs> yeah, we do. Soup? Soup, yeah, soup. It's so funny to look down the road and see all these guys eating bowls of soup. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I gotta hurry. Um, this one guy last week, man, he was out there trying to get his wife, you know, to come home. She's out methin and, and you know whatever she's doing, and he keeps trying to get her back. So, Father, bless her, bring her back in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know, we got a lot of prayer needs. Somebody has a prayer need. Louise well, got somebody special she wants to pray for. Yes. How many remember Diana Montgomery? Those of yeah. you who are. She was a graduate years ago, and she also was director of the ladies, a tremendous lady of God. We have her up there, and she needs a liberal right now. She needs time because she's only been given three months to live. So we really need to surround her with our love and our prayers and God's peace and comfort. Um, so can I pray for her? Before she does, Randy, explain to us what's happening to your wife's father real quick. Well, my wife went over there uh, yesterday to, to see what's going on, and basically they're just um, jacking her father up full of morphine every two hours, and she finds out they're not even feeding him. So I guess the, they decided don't feed him. So I guess they're just going to do the morphine and not feed him until he dies. So it's just, I don't know how they can do that, but that's what they're doing. You know, we had a soul winning class here yesterday. But CB, CB was here. CB, CB, whatever. 
And one of the, the girls, she was leaving here and making a left turn on Grand Avenue, got in a wreck and she, she got killed. Oh. So, Louis, will you just pray for all and everybody else's needs here across the way, everybody else? Heavenly Father, we come to you first of all, laying aside all of our requests and focusing in on you. And God, when we do, we realize you're an awesome God. We just thank you, God, and we praise you for who you are. And Lord, you heard the prayers of our hearts, oh God. We just lift up the family of the deceased in the name of Jesus. We lift up Anna, and she's over there intervening for her father. We just pray your will be done in the name of Jesus. We lift up precious Diana. God, above everything else, give her that peace that passes all understanding. Help her to know that, Jesus, you love her and that she can just trust you, God, whether she has three months, three years, or whatever you give her. I just pray for her and her loved ones in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bring the crosses in. Let's hear the word. This morning we sang several songs about love, and now I know why God told me or I felt directed to to feature 1 Corinthians 13 this morning. While you're turning there, I want to remind you that the love that we are going to bear fruit, if we have the Spirit of Christ in us, we're going to bear fruit. And the number one fruit is love. And when we sing that song, listen carefully, we can't earn it, we don't deserve it. This is how we are to love others. They don't have to earn our love, and maybe they don't deserve it. But Christ-like love loves at all times. So let's listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. I guess that's the ball game, just simply letting God be God. Look at it. That love in your heart. How many ever had that? Get the cross come in. You know what I'm talking about? You know, like I was talking about this morning. All of a sudden, you just go doing, you know, just going about your business. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God hits you. Yeah. Well, if you let it, He loves us. He's got a plan for us. He knows what we do. You know, if you love somebody, you want the best for them. And the best for them is not just giving them what they want. The best for them, and God knows us, is giving us what we need. That's what love really is. You think about that? And you know, just like out in the streets, and just we're seeing it more and more every day. As we go out in the streets, I know just I've got something inside me. I didn't I had it was always there without it before. I want to sit down with people, listen to them, find out where they where they are, what they need, and just let the Holy Spirit show me how to minister to them. Not my will, their will. And listen and let if they're if they're ready, fine. You can push a little bit. If they're not ready, don't don't beat them to death. I mean, I understand what I'm talking about. That's what's exciting. It's just, and then when he gets a hold of you, he does it. Yep. Amen? Amen. Come here, young man. Real quick. Met him down saying this to Paul the other day. 
I'm, I'm, I'm always embarrassing and putting them on a spot. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How's everybody? What do you think about this crazy place, these crazy people? Oh, I love it. You're one of them now? Getting there. Yeah, you're you going to fight this good fight and hang in there? Oh, yes, sir. What do you think about everybody else? What, do you want, what would you want to tell them? Just anything God put in your heart right now, what would you tell them? Just got to keep praying and keep reading the Word. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know you're preaching to yourself. Yes, sir. Are you going to do that? Yes, sir. In other words, you going to be a doer of the Word, not a hero only? Yes, sir. Amen. God bless you. You know, that's so neat. Just let God be God. He just came up, and all of a sudden, he said, I'm going to get off the street. So, what I even saying? Get on the bus. Let's go. Sure enough, he got on the bus, and here he is. <laughs> Took him down to Daniel's office. Not a lot. I didn't see him. I wonder what happened to him. Next thing you know, yesterday, I guess it was, I saw he was still here. Amen. What do you think about the drummer today? Where's he at? Amen. Joseph? Joseph! Joseph! Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Love you, brother. You know, God loves him. You know why? Because he's chasing him. Come on. Man, what's that good? Good to have you back up there today. You shrug me back. Go Seahawks. Oh. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. You going to hang in? I'm going to be a doer of the world. You going to be. How much time you got left? Two weeks. Well, you turn around to everybody, you're coming back. I'm coming back. All right. Yeah. I'm coming back. You know, I mean, Pastor Jumping Bill says, man, I like old Joe, that drummer. Well, you know, you're part of the body of Christ. He can hear you up there. You know, a lot of times we don't realize that we're part because we think that we're not part or we think that somebody else is getting all the credit or something. No, God chose us and called us. Remember, he's pruning us. He's working us because he loves us. He's getting us ready, all of us. Some of us take longer. Thank you. <laughs> so, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, you first time out there for for a little while, yeah. Oh, oh it was good. And you know, uh, you can't describe the feeling, uh, fulfilling your purpose. It's possible. You have a chance to meet anybody? Absolutely. But who was it? And what happened? By the way, he's been one of ours for a long, long time. He was when we first started pioneering Mill Avenue. He was one of them. I had a good time. You know, I just. Uh, you don't lose it. You just got to get out there, and somebody, everybody needs help. Everybody needs to be prayed for. But God's working in us, isn't He? Absolutely. That's what we got. To <laughs> what are you doing? What do you Every week you're standing up here. Yeah, um, I do it. I get up, but I don't, you don't have to come up here. But I get up to encourage people to come to the crosswalk. That's why I actually get up there. But I do it for that reason because I want the disciples to look forward to it, to do it with a full heart, you know, and to volunteer for it. Hopefully, you get a chance to minister to anybody. Yeah, I ministered to a young man who actually spoke Gaelic, and he actually oh. uh, told me about his beliefs, and then I told him about mine, and then I asked him if he knew the Lord. He didn't know the Lord, and he wasn't ready for that. But I, I prayed for him to know. Um, he studied history a lot, and I prayed. I had us pray together. For, um, for me to learn more, study more about the cultures and of the you know Christianity, and then for him to have a relationship with the Lord like I have it. So he agreed to pray with me like that. So we did. Oh, so it was good. Amen. How about you, young man? Are you getting all fired up? Starting to, yeah. <laughs> Starting to. Uh, going out there today was just my first time seeing that much people that needed help, so it just made me count my blessings. And How was the other night? It was fun. It was actually really fun. Where did you go? To uh, Scottsdale. I went with you to Scottsdale the other night. That was fun too. Uh, never seen so many people all bunched up in one of the ministers. You got a chance to just share Jesus. Yeah. yeah. You try to sit down and talk with them. They don't want to talk to you. You just share Jesus. Show them the cross and show them the sign and pray with them and pray for them and get on with it. Did you get a chance to minister to anybody today? Today? No, not today. But just show them. Did you carry a cross? Yes. Okay. Good work. <laughs> How about you, young lady? Serving the uh, homeless with uh, some drink, as well as some food. Amen. You like doing that? It was a lot. God bless you guys. I hope, I hope you never get tired of this. You can't. I'm going to tell you something. If you let God be God, you'll never, never get tired of this. Never. Is just seeing the cross, reminding 
us of what God has done the cross. And I'm going to tell you what, I've been doing this for a lot of years. I get so excited, just jacked up, just serving the Lord. I was telling everybody the other day, you know, Thursday, Thursday was a very busy day. And I was sneak in golf a little bit. All of a sudden, 5.30, we're done playing, man, about all worn out. I really had an hour to go to. So I went. And we got a chance to really, really minister to people. Just sit down and just eyeball to eyeball with somebody. You get out of the way and you share God with them and just let God be God. It's the most exciting thing there is. There's nothing better. Playing golf sick fiddle is compared to really getting down and ministering to the plan of God. How many starting to really truly really understand that? Amen. Now, it's our turn. You know what the Bible says? Would a man rob God? Get the ushers come up. The group come up. What are we going to do the music? Would a man rob God? How are we? And somebody says, how are we robbing God? Through your tithes and offerings. Now that's the Bible. Now, this is something to let the Holy Spirit do with you because I'm not, this is between you and God. Are you robbing God? Because you're not giving? Now, some of us will say, I can't, you know, you know you're giving more and you're not robbing God, in other words. You're doing the very, very best. He knows our heart. And I love this. When I first read this, Rob, how, why would anybody want to rob God? I don't know, ask yourself, if you're doing it, why would you do it? Why would you even consider robbing God? What do you think about all that? With our tithes and offerings. By the way, this is what it takes to keep it going. If we don't have any money, how can we go out in the street? You know, gas, insurance, all my land. You can't believe how expensive it is. Yeah. And just to, you know, get out and buy food and feed people and all this and house you guys and feed you and everybody else, it costs a lot of money. Amen. So would we rob God by not giving? I don't think so. I think if we really understood it and realized that, hey, am I robbing God? Instead of thinking about feed me, feed me, feed me, saying, am I really robbing God? Maybe... Maybe I'm holding back from somebody else. Maybe if I was able to, to give, maybe that would take I me mean, put a little bit more gas in the tank so we can, you know, go a little further or, or minister a little bit more or whatever it's going to take, buy another vehicle. We need all kinds of stuff. No matter where we're going and what we're doing, we need a lot of different stuff. And it all costs money, right? Yeah. But God, but God, he's going to supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Don't rob me. In fact, this is where it is exciting. This is where he challenges us. Do it. Let me show you what I'll do. But you've got to do it first. You give, I'll give back to you. There's nothing more exciting, I'm telling you, than just giving to God, letting God be God. And he does. That's where you, you can be all bummed out and everything else, and that the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. Oh, my land. It's just unbelievable. So... Just let God speak to your hearts. Not somebody trying to beat you to death, trying to get money grab a preacher, trying to get your money. No, 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 no. Hopefully the preachers that are sharing with you are doing their job, like Pastor Ordonez is going to be up here, which he's done so many, many times, just sharing the Word of God. Amen. And letting the Word of God just take... How many do you want to do that? Whatever God's called you to do, you just do it the very, very best you can and, Amen. and, let, it, and let it happen. So... Heavenly Father, just speak to our hearts. Our nickels, dimes, quarters. Maybe somebody ought to put an energy drink in there. Oh, I think we all ought to jump in, but that's fine. We don't fit. But anyway, Lord, just put it in our hearts to, to be obedient, to give. So we can truly, truly, just like you gave everything you had, and all you're asking us is to try you and see if you do what you say. So bless the gift and giver in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Amen. I gotta ask you one question. Yes. How long have you had that guitar? Since I was 16 years old, my mommy bought it for me when I was 16. Why don't you have a strap? Well, I broke through four of them, so I decided to never use them anymore. You couldn't do that if you had a strap. I know. There'd be no swinging. Well, you know, with all your fancy clothes on, maybe you need a fancy guitar. <laughs> well, mm, this is sweet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh, you think I, I do have another one. How, about, how long have you and I been preaching in jail? Uh, 26 years. 
Remember that one time we were in the uh, visiting area over at Towers? There were like 110 guys. So we're not going to stop jumping until everybody's jumping. <laughs> <laughs> We, they, they jumped. And they jumped. Yeah. Justin. Hey. So somebody cleared these and gave them to me, so somebody messed up. Uh, Victor. Hey. 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 Is somebody else supposed to graduate? It's here today, so because there was one more, I guess they're not here either. Okay, you know I love this. You just let it happen the way it's going to happen. If it, you get embarrassed, you think you get embarrassed, or you know the things aren't working out, so what? It's all working out because God's got it all working together for good. Now, if I understand this, they brought him down here just for the day. They're going to ship him out again. Took all you get to stay a couple days. How long did you stay last night? Come over. Back to Payson. Anyway, tell us about what it's been all like serving the Lord here and the program and you graduating from second phase and what's it like? A, what's what's happening in your life? Oh my goodness. Uh, I just started at the cross, man. I just had to surrender my life to the Lord, uh, submitting to Him and to His ways. Um, pulling the Word of God out and believing the Word of God, applying it to my life, not messing around, stop playing around and playing church. We are the church. We are the body. We should be edifying each other. You know, uh, I just believe that when we pull the Word of God out, right, it's like pulling out the, uh, the sword out of the sheath and getting ready to apply it to our hearts, right? And God will reveal to you what needs work done in our hearts because it's corrupt, from a lot of garbage that I've done in my life, man, from gang begging to needle using to you name it, man, I was the worst of worst, but the grace of God just pulled me closer to God. And that is it, man. You know, I just continue to press forward. Um, I'm not perfect by all means, I don't claim to be, but I just know that who is, and I know who my God is, and He gives me victory every single second of my life. Oh my goodness, this is the best decision that I've ever made. You know, last when I when I graduated was delight yourself in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your hearts. I want to kind of paraphrase it. And I just kind of want to reword it a little bit. It says, find delight in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your heart. And how can I know? How do I let God be God? Right? We say that a cliche. Well, let God be God. Right? It's an answer to everything. Hey, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I'm gonna let God be God. Well, first of all, how am I gonna know who God is if I don't read His Word? Right? Then you start to know who God is. And he is victorious, right? The battle is the Lord's, right? But you got to invite him in and you got to come into agreement with what he's already done for you at the cross, man. That's just what gets me going. And I get fired up, right? Taking the land over there and pacing everywhere I go. If I'm at Walmart, I'm praying for people. I got to stay in the spirit, get in the spirit, stay in the spirit. And everything is screaming for our attention, man. Looking everywhere like, man, oh, I just got to get right in line with the spirit of God and just focus on God. Right? And look for the hurt, man. They're everywhere. People are hurting everywhere. You can tell by the way they're dressed, man. That's someone screaming out. You're taking trouble and doing enough time. That's okay. Just take up more minutes. All right. See, glory to God. That's why I love this. You put that desire in your heart. That was my impression of uh, Pastor Walt. Uh, I love this place, guys. Uh, <laughs> We're just dumb shit. Right? <laughs> I love this man. I love my pastor. Man. Every one of you guys glean from these guys, man, that have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, man. Um, I know you get tired, man. I remember first phase, I was tired, man. <sighs> yes, that's what I did last time. Right, I don't mean to take up all the time, guys. But I just want to encourage you guys, man, to stay in the fight, guys. Don't give up, man. Stay at least give God six months, man. Don't give up, man. Forget about temptation. Jesus was tempted, but he got into the Word. He knew the Word of God, and he applied it to his life. He knew who his Father was, and we should be that same example for our families, man. Do it for your families. I'm telling you guys, because they're looking to us. 
right? And we need to be that example, man. And I think that's very important. And not to give up, man. When you feel like giving up, man, don't throw a pity party. I know. Just walk around. You know, get up, yeah. right? Stand up. Claim the victory in Jesus' name. And continue to walk this walk, man. Yeah. All right, I'm just, I'm fired up, guys. I love Jesus so much. I want everybody to experience what I'm experiencing. It's camouflage. It is. We soldiers. We're an army test. Yeah, but you don't look like it. Right? A three piece suit. Three piece suit. I got this in prison, so. I thank God for prison, guys. Prison was the, the stage that God used to. Uh, it was a, an academy for me. I, I, so I'm like, you know what? I just got into the Word of God. And I. Thank you for prison, Lord. Thank no, you. You know what you crazy man did? He carried a cross. From here to yeah, I love. Who's all fired? I don't know. You don't want to put it along the way. Everybody else, you know, kind of. Every time I pick up that cross, I wanted to give up. I did because it was so brutal on my feet, and just carrying that weight with Chris behind me with all that weight, it wasn't easy. I tell you, but I knew that God. I got into the Word of God. I'm like, Lord, Your Word says, God, that You would give me victory. I'm telling you, there was times I'm, I'm serious, man. <laughs> I have blisters on my feet, man. I couldn't walk anymore. I said, God, you can heal me, God. You're the, you're the one who possesses all healing, God. I just need to drop, Lord. Let me get this done, Lord. And guess what? As I was walking, I was getting in prayer. I was crying. I was literally crying. I was about to get I just want to throw that cross on me. I don't know why I'm doing this. But I know people are watching and people need to see the cross because it's a symbol of freedom. Even though it was used as an instrument of death, that brought salvation to mankind. For everybody and anybody. It doesn't matter what you've done. It's about what's been done for you to forgive you of all your sins because salvation was in his blood. And there's wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. So I just inspired, man. Come on, get fired up, man. Everybody should be fired up. Now, how he did this, I don't know. I just thank you, Pastor Ron, Mr. Wayne. I didn't get Oscar at my last graduation, Miss Louis. Oscar, I named everybody except for Oscar. Oscar Howard, thank you, man. Thank you for your teachings. Thank you for all the teachers, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Dono, Jumping Bill, Randy, everybody here. I wish I could name everybody. If I forgot somebody, I'm sorry. Uh, housekeeping, uh, media, Michael. And you know, Michael Kang, too, that guy, man, that Oriental guy, right? That Chinese guy. I love that guy, man. What a beautiful guy. Everybody here, guys, just stay in the fight, man. When you feel like throwing a towel in, guess what Jesus will do? Pick up that towel and say, wipe your face and get back in the fight. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. Now, this could be a 15-minute question. <laughs> what are you going to do now? I'm going to go on to, uh, back to Payson. And uh, probably uh, pursue the staff um, position. Yeah. Um, they have me teaching up there. Um, so thank God for that. I'm learning more about the Old Testament, how Jesus, yeah. God, Jesus is in every book of the Bible, man. It's so cool. We just got to get in there. And Jesus was like, oh, man, that was all Jesus right there. So thank you, God. Amen. Amen. That's, it. You go, oh, that's it? You going out in the forest? I, I will go wherever God sends me. Amen. I don't care if it's in a fiery furnace. I will go into that fiery furnace. I'm trusting that God's going to get me out of that fiery furnace. If not, then I'll know I'll be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Failure is not an option for me, guys. So remember that. You know what? We need an example. Talks cheap, whiskey cuts. Amen. Money. He's an example. You know, he's honest. When he was carrying that cross, he says, man, that was tough. I wanted to quit. Anybody that's walking this walk, that's trying very hard, you don't feel like quitting one time, you ain't, you ain't doing it right. But it's not a matter of quitting, it's a matter of just, all right, God, gird up your loins. That's when the Spirit of God gets a hold of you, is that right? Man, the time you're about ready to quit, something gets, gets a hold of you, and you're like, quit, I can't quit. Where would you go if you quit? 
I tell you what, you gotta look in the mirror every day if you're a man. Well, what? I said shave. <laughs> you wash your face every day. I look in the mirror, no. Really? And this is a good example. And there's so many, many, many of the rest of us are examples. Now he's just, he's him. He's, he's letting God work in him. You can see it in him. Out of prison. Completely revolutionize your life, true? In fact, the Bible says if you, you know, a man made Christ a new creature, you can just see it in him. I've seen it from day one. Yeah. He just busted loose. And he's still busting loose. Amen. So maybe we just, some of us that, you know, just they can be the example. Amen. Okay, I want you to introduce Chaplain Ordorno. <laughs> Not right. It's not a 15 minute deal. <laughs> well, well, I also want to uh, say thank you, um, Pastor JC, for uh, training me yeah. about the workouts. I'm doing the workouts up there in Payson, so getting these guys just fit and ready to take the land, guys. So, um, can we all just uh, welcome Pastor Don up here to give the word of God? Thank you, Father God, for who you are, God. Thank you for Pastor here, God, that you are equipped us, God, with your word of God to take the land in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Amen. Mercy endures forever, Lord. Father, we just kick this service off right, Lord. We want to just welcome you to this place, Lord. We thank you, God, that we brought you with us, Father. And your spirit, your anointing, Father God, is here. And we just ask, Lord, Open up our spiritual ears and open up our spiritual eyes, Father God. Help us to see you, Lord. Help us to receive from you. Help us to respond to you, Lord God. Speak to us, Lord God. We need you. We desperately need you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. We give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory, Father God. It all belongs to you, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, uh, last time I kind of uh, taught, um, and we were talking about the Holy Spirit, and Pastor Walt was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit last week, and we've kind of been on it now for a few weeks, and and so, you know, you kind of get on a, on a good, it's one of those things you just can't, you know, it's a... It's in everything, you know, the Holy Spirit is God, so God's in everything, and, and, and so there's so much. And so I wanted to um, kind of wrap it up from my end anyway, and maybe maybe it'll keep going, I don't know, but, um, uh, and, and I entitled this Power and the Holy Spirit. Power and the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for, uh, sister, for... Allowing God to to use you in, in in such a beautiful way prophetically this morning, um, I was I was thinking about doing an illustration and then um, and then I kind of uh, I kind of thought well it, it's simple enough to where I don't need the actual physical illustration. I think you guys can all use your imaginations. Can you use your imaginations this morning? Yeah. Amen. So let's use our imaginations a little bit this morning. This is a very simple illustration, okay? So let's say I had a container. Let's say it was like, like a vase, right? There's a table here. There's a vase. And let's say uh, I put some things in there, like some rocks or some pebbles or some sand. Just maybe a, a quarter of the way up, right? So let's say I had some water. That represented the Spirit of God. We know in the Scriptures many times the Spirit of God and water are likened to one another. So if I were to take that water and I were to pour it into that vessel as high up as it could go without running over, would that vessel, and this is not a trick question, <laughs> would that vessel be filled with water? Could you say that the vessel was filled with water? Yes, yes or no? Yes. yes, we have a yes. No, we have a no. So that vessel would not be filled with water because there are other things in there. Does that make sense? In order for that vessel to be filled with water, I would have to remove those things from that vessel. 
Because if I try to take that vessel and I try to pour it out so that someone else can receive, there's going to be a mixture. Amen. You're going to get some water, but you're going to get some pebbles. How many love to drink pebbles? Oh, pebbles. <laughs> now, when I was a kid, we had fruity pebbles. Amen. Those are bomb diggity. Not no more. It put me straight to sleep, but... <laughs> Nobody wants pebbles in their water. Nobody wants a little mud in the water. You don't want all that stuff that's floating around in the water. Amen? And so what I want to talk to you about this morning is that there is power that comes from God. Amen? And ultimately, all power comes from God, whether by permission or directly. But there is also power in this world. There is the power of man. We have the power of our wills. We have the power of strength. Amen? Some of us are stronger than others. Don't test. Amen? Don't test. <laughs> right? So there are powers in this world. Forces in this world that affect us that are outside of the power of God. So not all power is from God. Amen? Amen. And so it's important that we understand that God wants us to have power, but he wants us to have his power. Amen? Amen. And so this is pretty simple. Um, Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We've read this over and over quite a bit. And we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, this power is the power of God. This power is for the purposes of God. Sometimes we say things and we don't really understand what it means. So we, we pray for things, right? And we say, in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus means, for the purposes of Jesus. Hello? Hello? For the glory of Jesus, right? Authored by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus, by Jesus, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we say it, and it's almost like hocus copus apricadabra in the name of Jesus. <laughs> right? It didn't come from Jesus. It wasn't Jesus' thought. It wasn't his idea. He didn't co-sign on it, but you just want to slap in the name of Jesus on it to act like Jesus was in it. And I really believe in my heart that that's closer to uh, using the name of the Lord in vain than using God and damn together. When we start saying that God said things, authored things, desired things, when we know in our heart of hearts that God had nothing to do with it, but we want to put his name on it so that we can get other people to convince that this is the will of God. You still love me? Some of you, amen. You ain't got to lie, it's all right. Listen, I've been a father for 30 years. My oldest child is 30 years old. We have five children, three grandchildren. And sometimes, I always love to enjoy my children. But part of my responsibility as a father is to love them enough to tell them the truth. I, I, I love it if you feel like I'm your friend, but I'm your father. <laughs> and sometimes, I can't be your friend. Amen? Amen? If I love you, if I truly love you, I can't be your friend when you need me to be your father. Amen. Amen? Amen? And so we can confuse love. Love isn't always smiley and happy and nice and sweet. Amen. Jesus loved people and he called them brood of vipers. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So I'm going to share with you a little daddy love today, okay? Amen. Is that all right? 
Eh, uh, some of you are like, no. <laughs> Please don't. What is power? Power is the ability to act, to have an effect on something else, to have authority over, to command, to control, to have dominion, influence, to hold, to master, to reign, to sway. It can be both inherent, inherent or dependent. Now, in the Greek, and I have my scholar here to check up on me, there are two main words that are used for power in the New Testament. One of, us, one of them is dunamis, dynamite. That's the power of God. That is God's power. That is, that is God's power that can't be denied. That's God doing something that only God can do. Amen? I can't fool you. I can't deceive you. I can't twist it around to make it seem like I did it. That's what only God can do. That's dunamis power. And that power comes straight from him. In other words, if you're going to exercise that power, you have to be connected to him. The source. He is the source of that power. Disconnected from him. I can fake it. I can act like it. I can get some mirrors. I can get some smoke. I can say some hocus pocus. And I can trick you. Amen. Amen. Now, exousius is the other word for power. And this power is an inherent power. This is a power that comes from within you. This is the power that can trick and deceive and make many people believe that it's God when it's not God. See, we got this power. And this is the power that is promised to us by the world. We got this power. And you need to add to this power. And if you take this and you add this and you take that and you mix it with this, then your power, your personal power can increase. Sounds good. You know why it sounds good? Because all of us want power. Nobody wants to be weak. Nobody wants to be insignificant. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants authority. Everybody wants to have influence. Everybody wants their way. Listen, we all inside of us, if we're completely 100% honest, we all want to be God. <laughs> I still love you, my child. <laughs> I still love you. I know it hurts a little bit when we get spanked. Listen, until we're honest with ourselves, we can never get out of the way and truly let God be God. We're always going to have pebbles and rocks and stuff inside of that container. And we'll never have the pure spirit of God, the anointing of God flowing through us in the way that he wants it to go. It's not Amen. about the way I want it to go. It doesn't have to be. Look, it don't have to be the way I want it to go. See? Who's looking for titles and positions and, and control? Not me. That's not my trip. That's not my bag. My name ain't even on the bulletin. Hallelujah. <laughs> it don't matter. Here today, gone tomorrow. Amen? Listen. Power corrupts. There's a, there's a saying. It's not a biblical saying, but it says... Uh, Absolute power corrupts absolutely. One of the temptations of Jesus Christ, he offered him power over the nations and power and authority, which is something he already had, which I find a little strange. But listen, the devil only used the big guns against, the, uh, against Jesus. So power is a temptation that is for all of us. To do things our way, how we see fit. Amen, amen. We have to contend with this. God wants to give us his dunamis power, that dynamite power. Yes. Acts 3.12. So when Peter saw this, so this is where uh, they went into uh, the, the temple and there was uh, someone there begging and uh, he said, look, silver and gold have I none, but that which I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And then people started following them around. 
Like they were God. People started wanting to worship him. Like they were God. And he said, listen. He responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk? So he's saying, look, my power, let me get it. Let me get you straight, because in my flesh, yeah, I want you to sing my song. Hey, here comes Peter. You know, what I mean, he's healing. He's moving. He's the man. All right. But he says, let me let me get you straight. This isn't about me getting glory. This isn't about my power. This power comes from God. The glory becomes to God. This was the purpose of God so that you can come to know this God. You, too, can have this power if your heart is right. So he corrected them. But see, we tend to have a desire to have power. Look, I, I think about the, the disciples with Jesus and how they sat around and, and they started arguing with each other. Hey, who? I'm closer to Jesus than you, man, so I'm going to be like number three up in heaven, right? You'll be number two and then maybe Peter will be number one. Or what do you think, man? John, I don't know. I'm the disciple God loves the most, you know, John still does right? <laughs> I don't know, Peter might be two and I'll be one. And, and they're, they're vying for position. These men walk with Jesus. And they're still fighting over power and control and position. Mankind. So don't think that it's not something that we have to contend with. It's something that we constantly have to contend with. In Luke 10, 20. Jesus had sent out a bunch of people, 70 people. He laid hands on them that the Holy Spirit might come upon them, that they might go, that they might preach, that they might lay hands on the sick and see them recover, that they might cast out demons. And they came back, and they're all patting each other on the back. But I cast out five demons, and I cast out six demons. Well, I cast out seven demons. You should have seen I brought this one, uh, put them on the bus and brought them to church. And, I, la, la, la. and he said, be careful. Be careful. Don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Don't be all happy about the power that you've received. Rejoice that you're saved. Amen. Rejoice that you're on your way to heaven. Rejoice that you have a relationship with the true and living God. Amen. See, some of us want the power of God, but we don't want the God of the power. Because if I can have the power of God and then I can exercise it and add it to my personal power, now you got a muddy mixture. In Acts chapter 8, there's a story about a man named Simon. Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 9. There was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria. This was a person of position. This was a person who was respected. This was a person who had a lot of talents and abilities. He was claiming that he was someone great to whom they all heed from the least to the greatest. Politicians, Listen and obeyed this person. People listened to him and obeyed him. He had respect and influence. He had exousia. He had power, an internal power. He had a persuasive power. He had a tricky power. But he didn't have the power of God. Amen. But the people said he had the people convinced. They were singing his song. Simon's got the power of God. This man is the great power of God. And everybody did what Simon said. Anybody want to play Simon Says? You want to play Simon Says? You want to play Simon Says? No? Simon Says, clap your hands. Hey, man, I got you. Simon Says, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Simon Says, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Simon says, bow down and worship me. 
so that I can give you the power that I have. Nope. Don't go break, Simon. <laughs> they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God, Philip is church on the street, going out, amen, witnessing. Both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he, had, uh, when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. So we see that he believed, and he left his ministry, he left his post, he, he left... And he seemed to do a good thing by leaving his past behind and now walking and, and, and you know, following Philip, being a disciple. And Simon himself also believed he was baptized and continued with Philip. And, and he was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. I think that that, that was put in there because he was amazed. You know what amazed him? Because when he did his little sorceries and his little incantations and his little manipulations, he knew how that whole thing worked. He saw the wires and the mirrors behind the box and all of that. But when, when Philip was doing stuff, he saw it and he was like, there's no wires. There's no mirrors. There's no, this, this is a, a whole different kind of ball game, right? This is some different kind of power. I can't manipulate my way. I can't tell a story good enough to convince you that this happened. This really is happening. He was amazed. So at this point, we got to think, was he following Philip out of a genuine, sincere heart? To have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or was he following Philip so that he can learn this new kind of power so that he can add it to his power trick bag? Uh -oh. <laughs> and maybe kick his little ministry into another level. I didn't write it in the Bible. It's in there. Amen. Then Simon... <laughs> now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard... That Samaria had received the word of God. We know that the Samaritans and the Jews uh, were not buddy-buddy. Amen. There was a little uh, racism that happened back in the day. And, and they just, uh, they weren't too keen. They didn't, get, uh, they didn't get along. So when they heard that Samaria was uh, receiving the word of God, then they sent Peter and John to them. And so now this whole time... It was enough time for word to get back. It was enough time for them to travel forward. So, so there was quite a bit of time that, that uh, Simon was hanging out with Philip. Going on outreaches, doing ministry trips. Uh, apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that the saints... I'm sorry, they sent Peter and John to them. Who, when they had come down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So they had believed on Jesus, but they had not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So whether this means that they were taught the ways of the Holy Spirit before that they received, or uh, maybe Philip wasn't comfortable with exercising his ability to lay hands on people for them to receive the Holy Spirit. That was reserved for only the uh, apostles. I'm not sure. But they had not spoken in tongues, and, and, uh, and there was something... Missing that they came to bring them. For as yet he had not fallen upon them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So safe to say that it was, it was a baptism of repentance. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now who is the day they received the Holy Spirit? Everybody except Simon. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the hands... The Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money saying, hey, give me this power too, that anyone on whom I may lay hands on may also receive the Holy Spirit. So here they come. The apostles from Jerusalem. They got to know who I am. I'm the guy that politicians used to listen to. I'm the guy that used to run that town. I'm the guy. I'm, you know, big, bad. Simon, you know who I you've heard of me from Samaria. You know how I used to run things in Samaria? And they walk by and they lay hands on this one 
And they lay hands on that one. And they skip over this one. And they lay hands on that one. And they lay hands on the other one. And Simon's like, wait a minute. I've been following Philip around for all this time. How come I don't get that power? Yeah. Yeah. Give me this power also. And he offered them money. Uh, soothsayers, witch doctors, these kind of people, everything is done for money. I pay you, I want, I want this woman to fall in love with me, so I pay you to do your little hocus pocus so that you can make that girl fall in love with me, and that's how it works. So he tried to bring his past into his present, and he showed himself not to have truly been repented, and tried to bring something from over there into here, and guess what? Some things don't work in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Some things you gotta leave behind. Amen. They don't work in the kingdom of God. You can get away with it for a little while, but it doesn't work in the kingdom of God. We've had people in here before that tried to run this church like the jailhouse, like the prison house. I worked in the prison system. Fear and intimidation is a spirit that runs the prison house, am I right? Fear and intimidation. If we were to run this place like that, it'd be a whole different leadership, amen? amen. <laughs> and it wouldn't be godly, amen. right? So just like the spirit of fear and intimidation don't run the, the, the church of God, neither does hocus pocus, abracadabra, and all that other garbage, amen? amen. Has no place in the house of God. Those rules do not apply in here. Amen? Amen? We renounce them. We reject them. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Amen. They gotta go. Give me that power also that anyone who I lay hands on, that I, all of a sudden the eyes start coming out. I, 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 lay hands on me, receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you. <laughs> That's not how we do things around here. Amen? Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Then he corrects him. Listen, you think Peter hated him? No. He loved him. When did correction become hatred? We need to learn how to lovingly receive correction from our elders in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. You ain't getting no power. You're not getting a part of it. You ain't got no portion in it. I'm letting you know right now. He said, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Then he told them the most loving thing. Let me tell you something. This is one of the most, we need to learn to love this word. All of a sudden, sin and this word have become bad words in the kingdom of God. And that is backwards. The Bible said in the last days, good will be called evil and evil will be called good. If somebody asks you to repent, repentance is the most loving thing. It is a wonderful thing. As children of God, we need to be repentant constantly. Because our heart is deceitfully wicked above all things and we cause it, it veers off. It gets off track. It gets a little bit and we got to constantly be turning it back. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's so easy to make this thing about all kinds of other things. Yeah. Simon answered and said, oh, I'm sorry, wait. Uh, repent, therefore. Repent. How much love did this brother have for him? Repent that this your wickedness. Pray that God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Now, I want to say this. Forgiveness is a one-time event. You come down here and you're sincere in your heart. and You ask God to forgive you. It's gone. Your sin is not greater than the love and the forgiveness of God. Amen. But repentance is a process. Changing your mind about it. I don't drink just because I, I don't want to drink or because my church tells me I don't. I, 
I've been fully convinced and persuaded. I don't do drugs anymore, not because my church tells me I can't do drugs. I've been fully convinced and persuaded God has changed my mind, transformed my whole mind about the way I think about that. And so therefore, I don't do it. And that is a process. So you can't take somebody out of this lifestyle, this demonic, wicked lifestyle where they're manipulating and controlling everybody and then all of a sudden their mind is just going to change overnight by some prayer or some act of contrition. And Simon answered and said, pray to the Lord for me that none of these things would come upon me. He got scared. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So many of us, we don't ask God to forgive us until we're in trouble and we're scared. But that's sorry for the consequences and not sorry for the actual deed. And so when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem. And nowhere else does it say they went back and prayed for Simon at some point. Simon got filled with the Holy Spirit. Simon got elevated to a position and a title and leadership. Nowhere in the Bible it said they just stepped off. Now, church tradition says he did go back to his ways and had a heretical ministry that actually was in confrontation with the body of Christ. And so heresy is when we mix it's not that somebody doesn't believe in Jesus, is that they just don't only believe in Jesus. See, when you believe in Jesus as Lord, that means master, boss, number one. There is no other name. It is the name above all names, his name. He is Jesus Christ. He is Lord. And there's a lot of people, look, demons believe in Jesus. So it's not whether you believe in Jesus. It's whether you believe in Jesus alone. Because if you don't, that's what they call heresy. That would make you a heretic. And that needs to be repented of. Lovingly. 2 Peter 2.1 But also false prophets arose among the people just as there will be false prophets that will arise among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even, de even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Whenever we confront power, whenever we come to power, we have to ask ourselves these things. What is the purpose for this power? Because power is all around us. Yes. Amen. And the temptation to pursue and to allow that power to whatever degree, whether it's to consumption or to obedience or, or to uh, some type of action. I have to ask myself, what is this power for? Listen, the power of God is for the purposes of God. Amen. Amen. The power of God is the power to be a witness. The power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, we see right at the beginning in the book of Acts, they began to speak in tongues. It wasn't to show people that I was spiritual. It was, it was to speak in other languages of the people that were there so I could preach the gospel to them in a way that it, they will understand. And also they would understand that I couldn't do this within my own resource. It had to be God speaking to them through me. It was a submitted power. Dunamis power. That comes from the source of God for his purpose to preach his gospel, to do his will, to heal people that they might glorify him. Not that they would think that I'm somebody special. Amen. See, if I have that in my heart, that's a few pebbles in that water. Huh. If I have that in my heart, then that's a muddy mixture. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit, as, as we're able to speak in the power of the Holy Spirit, it lets us know what's truth and what's not. 
It allow, he allows us to exercise spiritual gifts again for his honor, for his glory, that he might be glorified. That people will know that there is a God in heaven. He gives us an anointing. He gives us a desire and a calling to go out and to preach the gospel. I went to jail a uh, week before last and, you know, one of the guys was like, you know, I, we, we appreciate you coming here. We realize that you don't have to come here. We realize that, that you can be doing something else rather than spending three or four hours in a, in a jail cell on a Saturday. You've got a family. You've got a wife. You've got kids. And I said, I appreciate that, brother. I said, you know why I come here? Because Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He said, when you do anything unto the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. I need Jesus. I need as much Jesus as I'm going to get. If I got to go to the jail to get Jesus, then that's where I got to go. That's why we go out into the streets. We're doing unto the least of these. We're obeying God. We're being Jesus, in a sense, to some of these people. We might be the only Jesus that they see. Don't they deserve the real thing? Don't they deserve the real thing? Wow. Listen, people got real problems. And the real, the real fear of having this money mixture is that at some point we're going to come up to a problem that that money mixture isn't going to be enough. They need the pure and the sincere gospel, and we forgot about it. We don't really know. We don't really have it anymore. And so people come with real problems, and we give them fake solutions. Money mixture solutions, worldly solutions, psychobabble solutions. Listen, the world can never heal the world. A kingdom divided against itself will never stand. The world cannot heal the world. Only the body of Christ can heal the world. We are the salt of the earth. We, those who are submitted and connected to Jesus Christ and to his power, in his power alone. Amen. He sanctifies us. The power is both for without and also for within. So that we're not deceived and confused as to what the truth is. See, you can fool all the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time. You can never fool God. If you do, you're just fooling yourself. And you can't fool all the people all the time. Amen. Listen, we either have it or we don't. I don't want, I don't want fake. I've been saved for 30 years. I'll be 31 years. I'll be saved October 16th. 31 years. Look, fake didn't get me this far. Amen. 